Hello everybody, this GE Inverter Technology Microwave Oven is not working. By the way, it looks exactly like the inside of a Panasonic microwave I also worked on. So some of the parts in the Panasonic are identical to this GE, so I suspect this microwave is made by Panasonic. So the standard disclaimer here, there are some really, really nasty high voltages in microwave ovens. So this is not for the amateur to tackle. I'm not responsible if you electrocute yourself or hurt yourself. There's a capacitor here inside this microwave which is charged and uh, it'll give you a nasty shock but the voltages in microwave ovens are very high. They will not only shock you, they will kill you. So, warned. I have found the problem but let me show you what the symptoms were first and I'll show you how I was able to fix this one. There are five fasteners on the back of the microwave and then two fasteners on the side. Here's a close-up of the screw. This is a, a T20 Torx but not a standard T20, it's tamper resistant. It has that little stud in the middle of the opening. Here's what the correct T20 tamper resistant bit looks like. It's just like a standard T20, but it has a hole in the middle of it. So there are five of those that need to be removed, and then two regular Phillips head screws. So seven screws all together. So let me demonstrate the problem for you. You clock's running, it's working fine. Open the door, the light comes on inside. Works fine. I'm going to add one minute cook time. Going to hit start. One, two, three, off. So when I press the start button, fans did not turn on or did the magnetron. Essentially nothing happened other than at the end of three seconds, control shut off. That told me that I probably had a problem with the interlock switches. There are three micro switches which are activated by the door. One of them is right here. has this white connector on it, two wires in it. And then there's another white one here and a yellow one. So the primary is right here, this white one. And then there are two more. One is called the monitor switch and one is called the secondary latch switch. So one of these is the monitor switch and the other one is a secondary latch switch. If you look very carefully at the primary switch right here, this one, you'll notice there's a little bit of discoloration on the top of this white connector here. And so that was sort of my first clue that maybe I've got a primary switch problem. And on closer investigation, if you look at it really closely, you'll notice, and I've accentuated the gap a little bit just for demonstration purposes, but you'll notice the distance between the end of this white connector and the back of the micro switch. In fact, the correct position for that is there. There's no gap. No gap. And these switches get a lot of abuse. Think about it. Uh, they're bumped a lot because you're constantly slamming the door. They get a lot of banging from the door being closed. But that needs to be... That connector needs to be pushed on all the way. The other thing I've noticed, and it may not show up on the camera, is that there's a little bit of arcing. Some black arc marks on this terminal further confirming that I, w I wasn't getting good contact from that connector. So make sure your connector's pushed on all the way. That switch that was causing the unit not to run properly. Let's see if it works. Let's put two minutes on the microwave. Let's start it. The fans turn on, the turntable turns, the magnetron's running. Got a cup of water in there. Have a glass of water. Let's see if it's warm. Yes, it is. It's heating. It's def definitely warm. So that definitely fixed the problem. It's that simple. Just making sure that the connector to the door switch is seated properly. Thanks for watching. If you found this helpful, informative, have it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel.